Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tanner, Tech Tanner, Tech Tanner. Hello, this is Tanner Tech. And you may be wondering why I have this strange blinking contraption on my desk. Well, this is a super overcomplicated, redundant way to blink an incandescent light bulb. There are much easier ways you could have done this, but I decided to do it the most complicated way possible. Now, the way I've done it is I've used this neon light bulb, and this neon light bulb is in a relaxation oscillator circuit. So what happens is this neon light bulb sends a pulsing uh, little pulse over a wire, and that goes to the grid of this vacuum tube, which controls the current flow from the plate to the cathode. That, in turn, controls the relays turning on and turning off. And when the relay can turn on and turn off, that activates the incandescent light bulb. So this whole circuit works pretty good, and it works with all these little circuit components under it. So before we get into actually building this whole little contraption, let me explain to you why I'm doing this. So there's this competition going around the internet, and it's the flashing light price of 2017. And pretty much what you need to build is you need to build something that flashes a light in between 0.5 hertz and 2 hertz, and it needs to be super original and super cool. And so I came up with this circuit idea because it uses all light bulbs and only two silicon parts, and those aren't even transistors. So it's pretty cool because it has all these little bulbs on it. It has a neon light bulb, it has a vacuum bulb, and it has an incandescent light bulb. And all these other bulbs serve the purpose of blinking this bulb. Which is pretty cool because it's this blinking light bulb that's powered by other blinking light bulbs. Okay, so let's get started with the actual circuit diagram for our light blinker. So right here we have 110 volts AC coming in. Now our first power supply will go to the blinker or the relaxation oscillator. And so that'll go through this diode so it makes a positive voltage right here. Now that voltage goes to this 1.5 mega ohm resistor to charge this 2.2 microfarad capacitor. Now the cool thing about neon light bulbs is that on a certain voltage they will conduct and then at a certain voltage they will stop conducting. And while they're conducting they draw a little bit of current. So for this particular neon bulb, as soon as the voltage between here and here reaches, I think it's 70 volts, then the neon bulb will light up and it will draw current, which will discharge the capacitor through the neon light bulb and through this resistor. Now as soon as it discharges down to 60 volts, then it'll stop and this will once again charge this capacitor. So by changing the capacitor and this resistor, you're changing the time base of this relaxation oscillator. Now you may be wondering, what is this resistor right here? This is so that way we can get a voltage reading to drive our relay. Because if we tried just to read the voltage on the capacitor, it would only fluctuate between 60 and 70 volts, and that's kind of hard to use. So every time this uh, neon light bulb conducts and current flows through this resistor, current flow across the resistor will make a voltage across it of about maybe 0.1 to 0.2 volts. And that voltage will go through this capacitor to drive the grid of this vacuum tube. Which brings me to my next point, the power supply for the vacuum tube circuit. So right here we have our 110 volts AC, and it's also going through another diode and charging this electrolytic capacitor, rated at about 400 volts. Now that voltage will go into this relay, into the plate of this uh, 6CV6 vacuum tube. A 6CV6 is a small little pentode, and pretty much what this does is it'll switch on the relay when there's a tiny voltage on the grid. So what happens is when this little cathode is heated up by 6.3 volts from another power supply, and it'll make a lot of electrons flowing around this little cathode. Now what happens is when we apply a voltage to the grid, because right now it's negatively biased, then it will allow the electrons to flow to the plate, and it'll allow a current to flow from the power supply through the relay coil, through the vacuum tube, and down to ground. Now we have two grids, one of them is the screen grid and the suppressor grid. Now the screen grid is to further accelerate the electrons from the cathode to the plate, and so we'll tie the screen grid, which is right here, directly to here. Now the suppressor grid is to get rid of some parasitic capacitance that uh, poses some issues in IF circuits with vacuum tubes, but we don't really care about that right now because this is a simple switch on switch off circuit. So we'll just tie the suppressor grid to the plate too, so that way they both have a positive potential. So that way, when this relaxation oscillator starts oscillating and the neon light turns on and off and on and off, it'll cause current to flow through this resistor at varying intervals, causing a voltage to be pulsed along this line to the grid of the vacuum tube, and that pulsing voltage will turn on the relay and allow current to flow through an incandescent light bulb into ground.
So that's the circuit. This is the practical application of my circuit. This is the original prototype. As you can see, I have my capacitors, my neon light bulb, my vacuum tube, relay, incandescent light bulb. Everything's just kind of scatterbrained along my desk on breadboards and connecting with alligator clips, and it's kind of messy. So let's fire this up. I'll first turn on the filament power supply, which is about 6.3 volts. Now after the filament in the tube is all heated up, we can fire up the circuit by turning on the variac. Okay, so now as you can see, my whole circuit is all warmed up, the vacuum tube's warm, all the capacitors are running, everything's fine. And as you can see, the light bulb is flashing on and off, and you can hear the relay clicking with the light bulb. If we look back here, we can see the little neon light flashing, and every time the neon light flashes, it triggers that little voltage to the vacuum tube that triggers the incandescent light bulb to light up. Alright, now that you can see that the proof of concept circuit is working, with the light bulb lighting up, Everything is running fine, the vacuum tube's all warm. Let's build this on an actual piece of wood. Let's do it on this piece of wood. So, let's get building. So these are all the parts I'm going to be using for this cool light flasher. So over here I have a piece of wood with four different pieces of little legs. These legs are going to go on the bottom so that way this thing can stand up. I then have my capacitors, diodes, which are the only semiconductor components in this whole thing, resistors, neon light bulb, vacuum tube, regular light bulb, and relay. Now what I'm going to do first is drill holes into this piece of block right here. So that way I can mount the vacuum tube in the middle, I can mount this little uh, incandescent light bulb on the end, and I can mount the neon light bulb on this end. Alright, so after a little bit I got this top part of the vacuum tube light flasher all done. So as you can see we have the incandescent lamp right here. We have the 6CV6 tube right here, and we have the little neon bulb right here. If we look on the bottom, I have made a special tube socket for the 6CV6 with little copper wires coming in and coming out the bottom. I also have this little wire, and that goes to the outer casing of the light bulb, and then I can solder directly to the middle, so we have our two light bulb connections. We also have the two connections for the neon bulb, and the four different connections to connect it to its power supply. So that's the bottom, now it's time to add the legs and install all the electronics. Well, that's it. That's the whole circuit working. As you can see, we have this little light bulb right here. And that light bulb is the incandescent light bulb that blinks at that certain rate. We also have the 6CB6 vacuum tube that is converting the signal from the neon light into a larger control circuit that can control the relay that drives this light. We then have the little neon light that is the part of the relaxation oscillator that gives the pulses for this tube to run. This is the whole stand of the device working. Now to prove that this thing can run 5 minutes, I'm going to set this little timer up here, and that's going to count down while this whole circuit runs, just so you can see how long it can actually run for. So here we go. Well, that's how to build this cool little circuit that can blink an incandescent light bulb. I think it looks really cool. It looks like kind of an art piece. So, that's how to build it. As always, thanks for watching and stay tuned for my next video. It is blinking on and off. The 